Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. Today is My Choice Tuesday, and we're going to be listening to Spirit Box on this channel for the first time. This is because I've heard a ton of good and intriguing things about their lead vocalist, Courtney LaPlante. Now, the song we're going to be listening to specifically is a one take. So this would be just one straight through recording that Courtney did, I believe, with the other band members of their song Rule of Nines. And when I dug into this song a little bit more, I found out that Rule of Nines is actually a medical term. Very intriguing title. The Rule of Nines is used basically by emergency medical professionals to assess burn victims for how much of their body is covered in the burn so they better know how to treat that person. So uh, I did take a look at the lyrics. They were, they had a lot of depth to them. Um, and I just think it's such a fascinating title for a song. And I'm really excited to get to hear Courtney for the very first time. Let's get to it. Okay, first impressions, very, very pretty voice. Um, I understand that she does uh, clean singing and harsh vocals, so I'm excited to hear the harsh vocals, obviously, as well. Um, but the the initial way that she started, uh, well, obviously she spoke at first, and her speaking voice was quite low, uh, really quite low. So I thought to myself, oh, she'll probably sing lower, but then she started actually in a bit of a higher tessitura meaning like a higher overall range that she's sitting in. That's tessitura, essentially. Um, so she started in this higher, almost sigh-like area of her voice, more head voice in there, or some people will call that falsetto. I'll usually refer to it as head voice because of my classical background. Uh, now, the other thing that was really interesting to me is that she was actually bobbing in tempo before we heard the music start. So I'm going to go back to that. That tells me, I wonder if they looped the intro a few times just to help her have that groove right away. I'm not sure, but she had something in her ear already going. So let's, let's check that out. Boop, at the very beginning. See, she's already got a beat. And it's right in time. Okay low speaking voice. It's time for singing and then some screaming and then some singing and more screaming. A couple other things. Her hair is really pink and very, very, very awesome. I love that. Uh, also, she looks like she's very warm and she still has a, a sweatshirt on. Sometimes I know vocalists actually like to be a little over warm that they'll say that that keeps their vocal folds warm. Uh, Different people have different preferences, but I think that if she was feeling uncomfortably hot, she would have taken the sweatshirt off probably. But it's so you can see she's got a little bit of a sheen. Uh, so maybe it's just warm in the studio and she likes singing in hotter temperatures. Don't know. Inside, 
breaking down I bury it in time I want to be part of life Did treat this up in my mind If that's what you like Your legions will be the light She's, she's obviously about to, <laughs> that's the kind of face that you see usually right before a big moment. Oh, wow, what a terrible time to pause, Elizabeth. <laughs> I, I found it really interesting to hear this, a lot of airiness in the sound, but then she started adding a lot more, um, a lot more body in the sound, a little more power behind it. And it took me back and I thought, wow, was she actually in a chest voice this entire time? that had just uh, a lot more like fluffiness in the air going on because she could be doing that. Um, so whatever it is that she's doing, like we really would to know, we would need to ask her or stick a video camera down her throat. Um, but it is, it is obviously mixing several different things together and creating, I would say like an overall really pleasing sound. Uh, it has a lot of emotion behind it. She's got like, she's using tons of sighs in it. She'll even go to the point of sighing off of a note instead of singing all the way through the end. And she also seems to sigh into notes in a lot of different ways too. So uh, very, very wonderful. But I'm guessing, I'm hoping that this moment that's coming up is why all of y'all have been telling me that she has to be listened to. It's like this little angel disappeared. <laughs> like what, what happened? Ah, uh, okay, that's fun. That is a very, very large contrast. And it sounded like we had a different, couple different kinds of screams in there. Okay, oh, let's go back and catch that one more time because I think the shock value is so much. It's kind of, it's a little hard to analyze because you're just like, whoa, what happened? <laughs> things I find fascinating about her screams is the way she has, she actually has, goes like a little, she goes towards a clean singing sound a couple times. Um, it's really in the middle to latter part of this section. Uh, and you hear more pitches, like sung pitches. Screaming uh, tends to have a lot more noise in it. If I were to look at it, like within a spectrogram, I would see, instead of like a clear pitch, I would see just more a wall of different kinds of sounds that register as noise a lot of times. Um, but there still can be pitches within that that become more predominant. But she goes to the point of actually like partly singing sometimes. It's very, very interesting. So when she sings, uh, no body follows me, I believe is the word. Is that the right word? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm wearing my lyrics here. Okay. Um, of opposing forces, how to do a schism rule. 
I was not watching the words I confess as we were going along. You know what? Let's go back just a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to hear words within screams. And ah, this is in time. Ah, interesting. Okay, this actually goes very well with the words too. In time, I learned the rules of a sadist. So you get a lot more pain there. Entwine till there's nothing left to strain. Huh, nothing left to strain while screaming? Definitely working on some juxtapositions there. No body full of pain to take from. They said it's a cruel world. I, I really love these lyrics. I feel like there, there are so many different ways you could interpret this. Uh, and I like the way that she's channeling them. Um, I definitely am not one of those people that says you need to just sing beautiful lines to be expressive. I'd rather the person uh, take from tons of different genres, tons of different sounds till they find the sound that they think is the most expressive to communicate a message. And she seems like she is really transmitting that. Um, even in the way she started sighing, you can tell that she's releasing the expression into the microphone, not so much keeping it for herself. It looks like she feels, but releases it in. Uh, and I feel that as well in this screaming section. Let's go back just a little bit more. One more time. Very fluid. Fascinating. They said it's a cruel world. I learned the rules of a sadist. So I lay myself down in the shape of a body. I live in the figure. Okay, let's talk a little bit about where she has tension and where she doesn't have tension. I'm fascinated watching her mouth. She actually doesn't use a ton of extra diction. She gets really close to the microphone. So when you're really close like that, you often don't need to have some of the like really big mouth diction that we'll sometimes see more in live performers or especially in opera singers that tend to have a lot more going on. Um, especially when you think about S's. S's tend to be too hot a lot of times, so they'll have too much sound, essentially. Uh, and she she does really light S's, and some things are much lighter diction. This makes it feel more intimate overall. Um, it does make it a little difficult sometimes to understand, but the idea with this kind of style of enunciation is that it's more casual. So I think she's very intentional about doing this. And I appreciate that uh, her mouth does not seem to have much tension going on around it. When she was doing her screams, it was funny. She actually had like little, little chin tension there. I don't know that that would actually be bad in any way. When you sing, you need to have tension in some areas. And in some areas, you need to have relaxation. You just want to make sure that the tension and relaxation are in the right spots so that you don't do damage. I think uh, the fact that she's able to slip back and forth between screaming and clean singing so much is a definite indication to me that she's using some really good technique here, especially in the scream. I would guess that there's no damage happening. Uh, <laughs> you know, let's let's go back a little bit and then keep going. I like the way she'll, um, she will use like, it's like the cheeks, a little bit of her upper lips too, every now and then. And it's not to try and get more diction, I think. It's actually to get a certain tone quality, get something a little more bite 
right? One of the reasons we would say it has more bite in the sound is because we see more teeth, but we know what that sounds like. So you see it and you hear it. You're like, ah, oh, yeah, she had more bite in her sound at that point. So it's interesting. She's done that a few times. Um, I definitely, I appreciate that she's staying relaxed overall. Um, sometimes when you see singers, they get a little, they can get stiff. You'll see them just like lock up and be in one spot. That is essential when you're doing studio recordings to stay relaxed. And it's clear she's moving with the music. She's staying pretty relaxed. I do see some shoulders kind of happening every now and then. Um, but it doesn't look like she's locking down on her shoulders to sing, which is also good. You don't really want to lock down like that because that often is a sign of somebody jolting their air up. Um, instead it just looks easy and chill. So I guess like really nice laryngeal position happening. Oh my goodness. I, I love that. You know, I wonder, she did do like the like shoulder hunker down right when she went to screaming. And I wonder if that actually helps initiate the scream. I could see that that sudden extra bit of air might be helpful for that, but I'm not a super pro into all of the great screaming techniques that are out there. I think that's why you guys like to suggest these things to me because you're like, will you be shocked? Can we get some more screaming? Uh, this, uh, I was really loving it. Like the it's like the screen that she has here has a lot of different layers to it. The same thing that I like about singing voices. It's when they have different kinds of layers. I want these voices to hit me on many, many different uh, terrains, essentially like soundscape terrains. So this is, this is a very interesting scream to me. Uh, not to mention the attitude at the end. Confidence counts for so much when you're singing. Um, I'm going to go back one more time because this very end to me, uh, it really, it really sounded like a barbarian about to slay like, some really crazy boss demon in a game. So I wanted to listen to it again. <laughs> You see that little, a little bit of chin dimpling that happens there? It's interesting. <laughs> um, the... I think it must take a lot of extra air to get these screams out. And it feels like she is really using her air for the screams. Like you really see like this kind of, um, it's like almost going into labor kind of breathing. Uh, it's, it's very, uh, it's very intense breathing and breath planning. I love the way she like bites off that end scream there. That reminds me of some other fantastic singers that we've seen. Uh, I love it when, when people uh, will sometimes interrupt their own phrases. I think it's just like a nice little way to grab attention and what a fun way to end a song too. Um, let's go back. Let's appreciate it one more time. I did it. <laughs> uh, she's hilarious and really good. Overall impression is that she is very, very good at going between clean and harsh vocals. Impressively good. I really dig both sides of her voice. I feel like she's developed them both extensively. It's very interesting to hear just the clean singing side um, because it 
it has so much depth to it, but then she adds all of the air as well in there. And it is really soothing while having some great cut at the same time. And it feels natural yet controlled. It's got a lot of dichotomies going in her natural singing voice that I think are just really beautiful, honestly. Really, really beautiful. I dig, I would say completely not objective, completely subjective. I really dig her sound. And the screaming side of it, it was so fun to see how she could like add in a teensy bit of clean here and there. And also I was really surprised by the different kinds of mouth and face shapes she was making while she was doing those screams. I'd love to learn more. and I'd love to hear her do more. I'm very curious, you know, will she, I wonder if she would slide those screams around. I bet that there's a lot more um, extensive screaming that she does in other songs as well. But this was done in one take. Like, what fantastic pitch. Uh, what a chill person. What a confident person. I think about what it takes to just grab one take, one fantastic take of a vocal. And I think it requires that a person be centered, yet able to completely immerse themselves in a song and deliver. And she really, really delivered in this. So uh, thank you to all of you who told me about how awesome Courtney is. I'm really excited to have finally gotten to hear her and I would love to hear her more. So please make some recommendations down in those YouTube comments below. We do read them and we absolutely track what you recommend. So yes, please write those down below. And also you should come and say hello sometime if you haven't already, hopefully you have. But I'm here every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 8 a.m. Arizona time. Warning, there's a time change coming up. Yeah, uh, just no time changes are weird in Arizona. So good luck figuring it out. And also you can find me on Patreon. Or if you'd like to learn more about voice or music in general, I have courses for that at thecharismaticvoice.com. I'll see you somewhere soon.